Welcome to a very sunny Tanganga, Colombia. fishing village just five minutes outside of Santa Marta on the Caribbean coast of Colombia. Now I was here 12 years ago and 12 years ago Lonely Planet described this place as a quaint small fishing village but the reality was even back then it had already become a backpacker destination. So 12 years later I have seen so much change and what I would say is while Taganga has its roots as a fishing village. Actually, now I think a lot of the fishermen are now using their boats for a bigger fish, and that is tourism. Taganga is a major point to head out to some of the most beautiful beaches in Colombia and also Tayrona National Park. So you can go to Playa Cristal, Playa Grande. There are lots of different things that you can do here. Does that mean you shouldn't come here? Of course not. I'm here 12 years later, and I want to check it out. I will say this. I really thought about whether I should make this video, whether I should come back. And so as a solo traveler, I wasn't sure if I was going to come back to Taganga because the last time I was here, 12 years ago, a number of backpackers were robbed by someone with a machete at night. And I heard just three weeks ago, there was a tourist who was shot. And I also watched a YouTube video of other YouTubers who were robbed at night. And so I thought, as a solo traveler, as a single woman traveling alone, should I be here? But the great thing about staying in a solid hostel, like where I'm staying in Santa Marta at Hostel Españoleta, is that they were able to give me some perspective and they said yes at night it is definitely an issue you're on your own it is not safe but you are free to go there during the day it's very close spend the day there enjoy and then just make it back here before the sun comes down and so that's what i'm going to do today i'm so excited to be back here All right, it's breakfast time. I didn't eat in Santa Marta, and so I was very lucky that the first person I met when I arrived was Alex, a street vendor who was serving ceviche. Now he had two different kinds. I chose the shrimp, and the prices range from 10,000 to 20,000, depending on how much you want it. I got 10,000. I love ceviche, but I don't eat, like to eat like a lot of it. And so he showed me that he actually had a license and that uh, to sell on the street, you do need to have a license. They do check food safety here, but I will say this with any kind of ceviche, eat it as early in the morning as possible. Don't eat it after lunch. Maybe at a restaurant they'll make it fresh, but uh, I don't like to eat ceviche after lunch. So this has shrimp, salt, lime. He also put in mayonnaise, ketchup. There's some onion in here and cilantro. This is not his restaurant, actually. It's another restaurant. I asked these kind ladies if they would let me shoot this here because it's so bright outside that I didn't know if you would be able to see it. So simple shrimp ceviche, 10,000 Colombian pesos. Mmm. Now I know some people think putting ketchup in ceviche is weird, very controversial, but here and even with the mayonnaise, it just makes this really creamy sauce, almost like a shrimp cocktail. Mmm, this is really good. It's tangy, but that lime, it's been sitting for a couple minutes as I got ready. Mmm, this is amazing. Also give me some saltine crackers. Really, really lovely, man. Oh, this is worth it. Such a good start to Taganga. I have a feeling today's gonna be a really good day. seconds after I put down my ceviche that somebody else approached me. Now to be fair, he did ask me before and I said, mas tarde. And it is later. So this is a cocada. I couldn't help but say yes to him. And that was because I said to him again, oh, later, I just finished my ceviche. And he said, well, you could buy one now and put it in a bag and then you would be helping me. And the thing is, I am such a sucker for helping tourism right now. Like, I really do believe this is the time to maybe splurge a little bit and help people who've been struggling so much. Also, a cocada, I definitely wanted to have because it is one of the traditional foods of coastal Colombia. It is a dessert made out of fresh coconut, milk, sugar. It's pretty simple, but it's just with all of the things from this area. 3,000 for one or two for 5,000. He told me it's the same price for locals as it is for foreigners. I don't know if that's true. 
but I was okay with spending 3,000. Not five though, because I don't love desserts, but I do love coconut. Mmm, very sugary, coconutty. Oh, oh, it gets better as you keep eating it. Like the undertones of that dark sugar start to come out. Mmm, it's really, really good. This is definitely too much for me. I'm gonna have maybe this. I'm gonna save this for later. He was smart. Buy now, save for later. Mm. I think today I'm just gonna be eating a lot, walking around, eating a lot. The beach here isn't actually that great. It's really quite gravelly, although you'll see a lot of locals here. I mean, there is water. It looks like inside it might be softer, but let's go take a look. Also down on the beach end is where you'll find the more expensive restaurants, the kind of beach clubs, spots. A lot of people come down here for a sunset to have a cocktail and look at the view. I will be gone by then, I think. I have noticed a lot of Colombians wear uh, water shoes. In Playa Cristal, almost everyone had a water shoe on. Although this beach looks like once you get to the water, you don't really need it, but so, so common. Here's a pro tip learned from the Colombians. Right behind all of the expensive uh, tents, you can actually just rent a chair, bring your own water, bring your own food, bring your own booze, and have just as good a day. And then also, they're smart because they're using the tree, natural shade. All right, I made it down to the other end of the beach, the opposite end from the fishermen, and I really like it here. So, as you get to this end, you go by a number of, what I would say is like the posh restaurants, probably more expensive. I know a lot of people go there for a sunset drink, but if you push past that, then you find a lot of Colombians who rented chairs underneath trees. They're in groups, they brought coolers, their own water, their own food, their own booze. They're having a good time. And then if you go a little bit further down, I think where I am is like the original buildings that first existed here before Taganga got a little bit fancier. So cheaper, uh, not as nice, but it's the same view. It's the same beach, it's the same view. So I've just decided to sit down here and get a little bit of sun and then I think it'll be lunchtime. But what's really interesting about this is, I would say in Taganga, people don't really bother you. They ask you if you know you want to buy stuff or if you want to take a tour, but they ask and if you say no, they keep going. Like, the, it's not a hard sell, no one harasses you, it's actually really nice. This place here actually looks really cute. It's a cafe bar and then, then there's another cafe bar. I am dying for an iced coffee. I might have one before for lunch or do I wait until after lunch? I'm not so sure, but I'm down here, so maybe it's coffee time. the lunch crowds have left and it's time for me to eat lunch of course I got fish I just saw it come in I got maharo now I got this two days ago in Playa Cristal and it was 45,000 here uh, they have it for 18,000 and that's part of a menu del dia so you get the soup and then the main I chose not to get the soup because I knew this would be a big portion so the soup was a, a fish soup and then I have a whole fried mojara. I had the choice of white or this coconut rice. Of course, I got the arroz coco. So, so good. Plantains, salad. This is like a typical, typical lunch on the coast. And then, of course, I got a beer. I haven't had a lot of beer in Colombia so far, but I got a Club Colombia because the weather is beautiful. I am looking out onto this gorgeous view. It's a really, really nice day. You know, as I said, I wasn't sure what I would think about Taganga, but this has actually been really great. To come in from Santa Marta to just spend the afternoon here or the morning here, it's great. To come in for lunch, have a beer, have a great meal, fantastic. Mmm. Oh, 
Oh, cold beer is so good. Let's start with this coconut rice. Mmm, sweet and coconutty. Mmm, I'm so good. Coconut rice is the best. And then this fish, just digging into it, I know they cooked it so well. It's just super easy. They make little uh, slits in it, so you can take a spoon, just eat it like this. Mmm. Really, really good. This fish is cooked so perfectly. 18,000 for a lunch. If you got the soup, it would definitely be good enough for two people. Mmm. You know, to be in a tourist town and still to have this kind of lunch, 18,000, is really, really good. It's interesting to see how Taganga has evolved. I still don't know if I would want to stay over here at night. Actually, I know I would not want to stay over here at night, but coming in during the day, coming for lunch, if you didn't like this beach and you wanted to check out one of the other ones, it's easy to get to. There's also a 15 minute walk where you can walk over the mountain and you can get to Playa Grande. It's so hot, I can't do it, I can't do that walk. I'm perfectly happy to be on the beach here, but apparently Playa Grande is also really nice. Mm. This has been an amazing day in Taganga, but I think it's time to go home. So when I came here, I got a bus, it was 2,000. I actually thought it was more, and the bus driver gave me the money back, which was so nice of him. And I think they come pretty regularly, but I've gotta go up a block, so I'm gonna figure out how to do that. Now the bus in San Marta that you have to get, it's not like at the bus station, it's somewhere outside the market. So if you don't speak a lot of Spanish, you could just say bus a Taganga. Um, I asked a lot of people and eventually I found that the good thing is it does have a sign, it says Taganga. So now I need to find the one that goes back and says Santa Marta. I found the bus stop right away. Oh, a bunch of people were waiting. I don't know if that's to Santa Marta though. No, it's Santa Marta. Patreon community for more behind the scenes and exclusive content you won't find elsewhere. You can also find me on Instagram and be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. All of these things make my day. Thank you so much for your support.